Uh, good evening, welcome to the third edition of the panel. First two episodes, we have Messi, Ronaldo, Arsenal, Invincibles beating Man United, uh, 99 treble winners. And tonight we're going to talk about Premier League all-time 11. Join us on the panel, we have Mr. Mark Rivers. Hello, Mark. Hello. Hello. Uh, Azif is back for his second appearance. Hello, Azif. Hiya. Making his Tottenham debut is uh, Liam. Evening, Liam. Yeah, and uh, Elliot's back again. Uh, good evening, Elliot. Hello. And uh, fellow Chelsea fan and Jens Lehmann superfan, Jay Lovejoy. <laughs> <laughs> all right. And join us for a hat trick all the way from Warrington via Village Chat. It's FA Cup winning Captain Emerson Boys. Good evening, Emerson. Hey. Thanks, thanks again. But uh, before we begin, obviously, Premier League all time 11. There's no better person to speak to than um, someone who's made over 200 appearances in the Premier League, Emerson. Um, in a nutshell, how, how good was the Premier League? And do you regard it as the best league in the world? Yeah, definitely. Um, has to be the best league in the world. Um, most entertaining, you know like to think the best players have come and, and to a extent um, established themselves in the Premier League and say it's one of them, one of them places that you, you want to play in. You know, it's been around the world, millions and millions of people and, you know, to have the privilege of playing there myself has been fantastic and a, a dream come true. Definitely, yeah. 200 appearances. It's, it's crazy. Will you make the team, though, and We're going to find out very soon. <laughs> it's, a, it's a question. I'll be disappointed. <laughs> so, uh, let, let's begin with goalkeepers. And Jay, as a, as a Jens Lehmann superfan, we'll be coming to you in a moment. Um, but some goalkeepers, the grace of Premier League. I've just, again, just done a bit of research myself. I was, some of the names I thought that was Peter Schmarck, obviously, we spoke about last week, and Petr Cech, David De Gea, um, David Seaman, Van der Sar. Um, Jay, who's, who's made it into your number one? Layman. No. No, not Layman. <laughs> um, Schmeichel. Schmeichel. What, what, what about Schmeichel? I know, again, we spoke about him last week a lot, but... Yeah. For me, obviously, he was the goalkeeper at probably the best team in the country at the time. Mm. Um, so, and sort of his, his impact, not only with his shot stopping, but going forward, like um, Rivo said last week, he just starts off... Starts off attacks with a humongous throw. He was he was a versatile goalkeeper. His shot stopping was incredible. And I think a lot of people look at Petr Cech's record and think, blimey, his clean sheets, etc., are really impressive. But he was playing in a system, a Jose Mourinho system, that was set up to defend. I think had you had Peter Schmeichel, he would have matched or if not got a, got a better record than him. Interesting. Any thoughts, anyone? Yeah, I yeah. agree with Schmeichel as well. Um, the game that sticks in my mind is against Newcastle when he more or less single-handedly won them the league. You know, all them saves against Newcastle, you know, in that, that phenomenal game uh, was fantastic. Uh, great presence. You know, I had a, I had a um, privilege of listening to Steve Bruce who, who used to talk about Shawn Michael, how commanding he was. <laughs> and, you know, for me, he's um, probably the best goalkeeper, I think, in the, that played in the Premier League. Five Premier League titles, Rivo, for your beloved Man United. <laughs> Yeah, I've gone. I've gone Schmeichel, unsurprisingly as well. Um, I just think at that time he did. He brought a different style. So you know, I'm really big on transferable skills and uh, that handball style that that he brought. And uh, obviously, you can see that with Casper Schmeichel as well. Mm. I've just got visions in my head the shapes that he come out. And uh, I think Emerson said about command in the box. He was brilliant for that. But um, I've been on so many sort of podcasty things and webinars I forget where, where I've heard it but I think it was Schmeichel himself interestingly said you know um, that he might shrug, he might struggle a little bit in today's game with his kicking from sort of dead balls and being that sort of focal point if you like in terms of playing out from the back that he might he might have struggled a little bit but certainly in that era in that team um, yeah and, and also you know when a lot of teams now are talking about playing out from the back, when I go out and visit coaches and we say about your philosophy, you kind of forget that <clears throat> Man United were quite direct at the time as well, as were a lot mm -hmm. of teams. But, you know, Schmeichel, more often than not, was a focal point of that, you know, going from defence to attack quickly. And it was probably his throws, really, wasn't it? Out wide to Giggs or Konchelskis at the time that really started those attacks off. Mm, definitely. Obviously, you made other than Man United he came back and played for Aston Villa and Man City didn't he play for Man City Man City as well yeah yeah, yeah. so had a great career um, Liam welcome to your first uh, appearance uh, did you go Schmeichel I got Schmeichel um, yeah. the biggest reason I got Schmeichel is because as a kid he was the keeper that, you know remember that advert with a penalty when the goalkeeper just takes up the whole goal 
and it's just, <laughs> yeah, that's how I pick yeah. his, his pure physical presence just takes up the whole goal um, and he'd be the least keeper I'd want to go up against that was actually the easiest position I found to pick for the goal ah. yeah as if is it a vote five for Schmeichel? Um, yeah, yeah, I think so. Correct me if I'm wrong. Was he the first one who started wearing these um, sort of outlandish coloured tops and stuff? Um, I'm, I'm not going to um, correct you because it sounds like you're probably right. <laughs> no, I, I just remember it as being one of those things that, you know, he was one of those sort of uh, pioneers, wasn't he? And he, he, he was the one who, I believe, brought in those the loud tops to uh, to sort of put off players. Okay. And, um, I like that. Yeah, it, it, yeah it, it, if that is true, it just sort of sums up, you know, what what he was like. He was, um, yeah, he definitely, he, he changed the role. I think Mark mentioned it earlier. Definitely changed goalkeeping in, in this country. Um, I, so, I yeah. remember, it was not in the Premier League, it was Champions League, and it was a header from Zamorano, I think, from Milan. It's that whole um, like starfish say or whatever you want to call it. It's just very yeah. unique. Elliot, was it a full house? Yeah, I, I, as a Chelsea fan, it was Czech would have been my next next one. Yeah, because he was for those two seasons. He was, I mean, he probably went downhill after that. If I'm honest, after the Champions League, I think he sort of the Champions League final. He did kind of deteriorate, but those two seasons, I think he was. I think he was massive for us, but I think five Premier League titles, and like you said about his, not not just his goalkeeping qualities, but he, you could just tell that he he just drove the team on a bit like Michael yeah. Jordan we were speaking about earlier. Mm. Just one of those characters. I don't know. I, I think Czech's more of a professional in his job, but Schmeichel had that bit of extra. To add yeah, to and he was captain a few times, especially when Keane was absent. Um, if I recall as well. So look, guys, you're the you're the gaffers, and uh, there's your team so far. So Schmeichel's in. And there's a little sub bench for a check. So anyone who's just not made the grade, they still get a game, but obviously not everyone. So um, we'll move on to uh, I'm going to go right back first. And as I always do, Emerson, I'm coming to you uh, first. Um, thoughts from the right back then in the last 28 years? This, I found this one the hardest, to be fair. Yeah, me too. Um, you know, Dennis Irwin, we talked about a couple of weeks, uh, a couple of weeks ago. Mm-hmm. Um, fantastic player. Gary Neville. We got Carl Walker in there. Um, I think I'll go Gary Neville just purely because his professionalism. Um, he was part of a very, very good Man United team, and his attitude was always give a hundred percent. And you know, so yeah, for me, Gary Neville regarding that side bit. I can't argue 400 uh, appearances and uh, eight Premier League titles. Who else went Neville? Yeah. 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 Oh, 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 I'm going to go straight to the no because I love a debate. So, Liam, who did you go for? Hey? I went for Kyle Walker. OK, go uh, for it. He's not the success on uh, Gary Neville. I think just how the game, how he adapted his game from when he went to Tottenham to Man City, knows he just stepped it up again. He's went from being a right back defensively to when the team's pressing. He's almost a centre midfield player. Um, and I think just the way he went on just stepped up a level. Yeah, that's why it went for me. I think in today's game as well. He would be the he'd be my first choice back in the Premier League. Just talking about um, which is interesting because he's he has fallen out of favour at England, haven't he? I don't know. Do you yeah. would you, would you would you put him ahead of Trippier and Trent? Uh, Trent is a hard one because he was close to getting in, but it's purely because he's only his first season. Um, but I mean his stats are already close to breaking records, and he's already broken the most assists record for a defender um, in the Premier League with 12 assists in a single season. Um, so I mean, he will be, he'll definitely be my future right back. Um, and with the England, I think maybe yeah, it might be worth giving him the shout because he's going to be the future right back. Where's the cutoff point for sticking with the old and bringing the new in? Um, but Trippier, I like Trippier. He's got a great set piece on him. Um, but I just, personally, I think Carl Walker and Alexander Arnold are better choices for the right back role for England. I think Carl Walker doesn't suit the way probably Gareth Southgate plays. I think Man City is perfect for him because he bombs up and down. They play quite narrow. With England, they've got tend to have a winger out there. Um, and as you say, it's falling out of favour. So I think that tells you tells you something where I think you know I think Man City won the league and he couldn't get into the England team or something like that. Mm. So it goes to tell you what how maybe how maybe how um, Southgate's setting up his team with Trippier and Trent, um, or he's just making his pathway for Trent. <laughs> 
and you no, know, Carl Walker be too much of a you know, you know, to drop him to the bench. Definitely. Thing is, I think Trent technically is probably the best mm. on the on the short list for me. And I think if we were doing this conversation in five years, it'd oh, be yeah. the one. And I think he'd have a clean sweep. It'd be the one. But obviously, it's just so early in his uh, career that you you kind of have to go with Neville. I think, um, sorry, go on. I think with Trent, it'll be the second season we'll we'll see if he can kick on again. Yeah. You know, because you know, obviously, he's come. No one knew about him. He's had a great season. How Liverpool played anyway, and it'll be interesting to see how he goes on from next season and or the season after when people start to attack him more um, than anything. Because you know, Liverpool. You know, you look at Liverpool's team. Their their crosses are coming from the fullbacks. So sooner or later, people are going to be able to stop that and see what happens after that. Great point. And just touching on Trent before we move on, he's not in the team. Um, but uh, <laughs> 84 games played, 25 assists, which is yeah. just phenomenal. That. Wow. Um, some good stats. But um, no one go Lee Dixon, Azif, Arsenal uh-huh. fan. No, I, I think like the guys have said, you know, for for, for the consistency. And the longevity, I think you've got to go, got to go, G Neb. So Elliot, not in uh, G Neb. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Ivanovic again. I think he, for uh, yeah. two seasons he was very good. He was solid. But when you when you're talking levels, Gary Neville, like the years that he was in, did that job. And he wasn't the most talented player either, and he admits that. But to stay at that level just through hard work and desire, I think you can't really. Bit go against him, can you? And what he brings to the dressing room as well. I bet he was yeah. so influential in that dressing room. Mm. Well, you can see him again. I said it last week, but pundit, I don't think I listen to everything he says. Like, I think he's fantastic. And um, yeah. Yeah. Um, I was but, watching the uh, Euro '96 earlier, and when he, I think he was like 22, and even then you can see the passion. Like when they scored against Scott, he was just going he, crazy he, at that age. He, he set the goal up, didn't he? And ran off down the south, down the line, yeah. didn't he? It's crazy. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Genev is in. Is in. Yes. Um, <laughs> coming over to, to you, River, we're going to go straight to left back. Oh. Um, the names I picked out, I'll just run them off in case uh, people have forgotten. But um, obviously, Ashley Cole, I think, is going to be mentioned here. But there also was Dennis Irwin, which Emerson said could play either side. Patrice Evra, Leighton Baines, and for Chelsea fans, Aspilicueta. But River, who did you pick? Um, <clears throat> Ashley Cole. Yeah, just. All those, for all the reasons we spoke about um, last week, you know, ski, uh, sorry, skill, speed, stamina, um, the amount of international caps that he's won, being involved in successful teams, uh, for me is just uh, hands down in that left back role. I get, I get the Dennis Irwin one. I thought he was brilliant, and as a Man United fan, um, you know, very versatile, play right side, left side, um, a threat with free kicks and things. But I think. As the game evolved, I just think um, Cole, Cole for me, hands down. Interesting. Did uh, anyone else pick Asif? Did you pick Ashley Cole from Arsenal uh, fullback? Yeah, again, like I think Mark just uh, summed it all up there. We, we were saying last week, weren't we, uh, that there was a period of time when he probably was, you know, the best left back in the world. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, you know, not just for club, for country as well. He was doing it so. Uh, yeah, I'll I'll go with that as well. Um, Emerson, did you did you play with Leighton Baines at Wigan, or did, did you miss each other, or did you play with each other? Yeah, I played with him. Um, I think I played one one season with him. I think I played with him. So no, he's, he was a he was a fantastic player. Great left foot, could get up and down. Um, he scored the winner. We beat Man United, um, and, we, and he scored the free kick at beat him. So you know, there's no no there's no doubt that he was going to have a, a successful career. Um, mm. Obviously went on to Everton, Captain Everton, I think he did. Um, fantastic player. So, yeah, I played with him, yeah. His stats are fantastic, by the way. Um, 32 goals scored, 53 assists. Unbelievable. 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 Jay, did, is it unbelievable that he's in your team or you went Ashley? <laughs> no, I went Ashley Cole. But <laughs> obviously, with Leighton Baines, I, I think I said it to you earlier. Imagine him in the top top team, mm. in a United or a, you know, or a Chelsea at around the time the kind of the, the league winning teams yeah. I think he would have been phenomenal but Ashley for you yeah for Elliot yeah Ashley Cole and um, uh, Liam Ashley. Emerson Full House yeah Full House look at this guys you keep getting on with tonight I like it Sorry, there's a lot of safety going on <laughs> 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 that's when it'll kick off. Well, I'm, I'm coming over to Emerson again. 
for the centre back. Um, again, used to play their Emerson. Um, you can do it as a partnership, or you can do it as a, a single, if you like, whatever you choose. But um, tell us who, who you went for. Okay, so I've gone for a partnership of Company and Rio oh. Ferdinand. Oh, beast oh, oh. oh. love it. Disgraceful. Disgraceful. I ain't gone for the usual. So, we not going for Ferdinand because uh, a ball playing defender, he brings the ball out, um, call and collective. I know they used to talk about Wes Brown as the Rolls Royce, but for me, Rio Ferdinand was the, the Rolls Royce in terms of how he used to play the game. Um, Vincent Company, you know, I think, you know, he was part of that um, Man City uh, revolution that started off, you know, the captain, Man Mountain of a captain, um, scored important goals, and yeah, just um, the leader on and off the pitch. So yeah, so company and Rio Ferdinand for me. I love it, mate. And uh, what a way to sign off his Man City career with that winning goal against Leicester last season. Well, that world exactly. game. I'm sure he scored a winner against Man United to win the title as well at some stage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you're Not right. Too sure if it was true, but hey. <laughs> it was, no, mate, great. Did anyone else go, uh, Vincent? No. Oh, Liam said yeah. That. Yes, Liam. <laughs> Same reasons? Yeah, it's just it's, when you think of defenders that actually change teams and improve them drastically, like so to improve a team like Man City drastically is quite hard. And I think he did that when he stepped in. Um, phenomenal player and a real leader as well. Definitely. And I think he came, Mark Hughes brought him like in 2008 as a centre mid, if I recall as well. And then compared yeah. to centre back, which is so uh, fantastic. Uh, Rizzo, who did you go for at the back, mate? I've gone for um, Ferdinand and Emerson Boyce. <laughs> Love it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Stop, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, Emerson. Sorry, Emerson. I went John Terry and Ferdinand. Same. Um, Same. <clears throat> yeah, just Ferdinand for the reasons that uh, Emerson has, has, has mentioned, you know, a uh, Rolls Royce. And, uh, you know, in that era, he was that sort of defender that could bring the ball out and sort of enter into that midfield third and was, you know, really exciting at the time. Um, and then, and then John, John Terry, um, just for like strength and bravery, again, born leader. And also I was on a, on a webinar today um, with one of the, about one of the national teams that talks about, you know, we don't really teach like blocking at that level, um, sort of putting on, putting your body on the line and that real sort of one-to-one defending um, and I just think he was a master at that. If you wanted anyone to put their body on the line, um, he was great at it. So as a, as a pairing, um, might be slightly controversial, but I'd put Terry and Ferdinand in there. I love it. And is, is Rio in? Um, Elliot, would you say, is Rio in yours? Yeah, yeah, I had JT and Rio as well. I've, again, uh-huh. a nice balance. Um, Rio Ferdinand was kind of, he was almost like what a centre-back probably is now, if you're not, like, you, you want to... Yeah. Good point. Defensively good, read the game, and a leader. But he also had that technical ability. I mean, some of the goals he used to score, he, di- he didn't score a lot. But when he did, it was it technically he was pretty good. Um, one, by, from Liv- uh, one against Liverpool, I remember. Yeah. Uh, and then, yeah. And then John Terry, for me, obviously I'm biased being a Chelsea fan, but he, I don't think he gets enough credit for how technically good he was as well. No, I don't. Um, he, used, he used to be able to ping a ball left or right foot. Yeah. To anyone on the pitch, and a, and a lot of people think he was just a, a brute, and a, like like Rivo said, he was physical. But if you actually watch some of his pass, you know, I think there was a pass he did to um, Ashley Cole. I think it was against Sunderland, and we beat him seven one. I think it was, and yeah. it's on the half volley, and he just caresses it on the half volley into Ashley Cole's path, in behind the fullback. Ashley Cole cuts in and chips the goalie. Decent uh, range. Yeah, mm. I don't think he gets enough credit for how good he was with his feet as well. Uh, it's, Really Even good... in his last season at Chelsea, he had a pass completion rate of over 90%. Yeah. Great stat. That's oh, a great great stat. stat. It's, ri- it's ridiculous. Yeah. And his he's like, as well, like said, up his lack of pace. Yeah, he's, 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 like he's so yeah. I think that, um, that's the thing for, for, for me, sorry, with Terry, was uh, when, when AVB came in and he had to play a different style and he just looked so exposed. Um, and I think that, like Elliot just said, that, that lack of pace, I think that's the reason why I wouldn't go for him. Who did uh, you go for? He, he, uh, I think Ferdinand a shoe in, uh, and I've gone for Campbell. I was yes. thinking sort of Campbell Ooh. or Ledley King, you know, between that, okay. sort of, you know, defenders who were, who, who were good at defending in any system. Um, 
And I think, yeah, Terry, I think the pace thing and the company, I think great leader. But in terms of, in terms of matches, he, he sort of fell off a bit, didn't he? Uh, he, he didn't mm. really play that many, many games near the end. Soul's a great shout. 503 Who, John games. Terry? John Terry oh, didn't sorry. play many games. No, 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 no. Uh, company, sorry. Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, Soul, um, 503 games. Two Premier League titles, 154 clean sheets. Liam, who was your um, who was your second centre back? I forgot to ask. This was between John Terry for me, but just because he was a player that would be willing to put his not body and life on the line. I mean, that one when he threw his face in front of the ball, I think that might have been for England still, but yeah. he was on his knees, wasn't he? He would put everything on the line. But I went for Nedley King purely because one of my Tottenham fans, I had my one buy, and uh, so he was a player that. Couldn't train ever because of his knees, but he'd still come in and compete at the highest level. Um, and watching him defend, I mean, the players around him at the time weren't as much, anywhere near in his level. Uh, he just improved us so much. And he could race back. He had the speed to go with it as well. And he held the record for the fastest Premier League goal for like 11 years. Um, yeah, Ledley King was just, yeah, he was, that was it for me, yeah. He was one of those, he was one of those shoulda, woulda, coulda players, wasn't he? He could have been, he could have been mm. one of the best that England had produced. But you were 2004, him and John Terry at the back one, it was fantastic. Yeah, probably the yeah. best England partnership. Pro- probably, it's not there because Rio was out, wasn't he? Suspended, so so and I mean, I've made this right. There's two for two for Vincent, which is Liam and Emerson, and um, JT. Is, is there two for JT? Really? Just looking around for not is it uh, uh, Jay, Elliot, and Mark? Yeah, yeah. He's in. JT's in. Put good on, argument JT. on the Vincent. Well done, um, Liam and Emerson, thinking outside the box. Well, not thinking outside the box. He probably deserves to be in there if we can't create the back. Um, <laughs> but we need to think. We need to think of some subs. So I'm just going to throw some names out that guys who didn't make it. You were talking about Trent quite a lot. Does Trent make the bench? Good sub to come on. Young player, isn't he? We need some youth in our team ready to come in. So. Well, these are like over 40. Yeah, that's a good point. And and the centre back maybe does Sol make it? Does Ledley make it? What about Carvalho? He was a Rolls Royce as well. Carvalho. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> we put Carvalho in. I mean, his other the other defenders that make by the way was I put I had shortly still a Virgil Van Dijk. I'm surprised yeah. his name wasn't mentioned. I know he's not oh, been here too long. A bit soon, yeah. yeah. I think you got to put Company in there just because of the votes he's had. Good point. Um, Tony <laughs> Adams as well. Jamie Carragher. Um, and I have, have got here Emerson's voice stats, if you want to hear them. Go on. Yeah. 221 games, 50 clean sheets, which I find very, very wow. impressive. Outstanding. He, um, he had more clean sheets than Yapstam. Double. What? Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's, yeah that's easy, man. <laughs> <laughs> 11 goals. Yeah, and four yeah decent. decent. How, many, how many goals, did you say? 11. How many that's, more than, that's more than Messi's Premier League record. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and mine. The box is full. I love it. But yeah, mate, um, let's have a look. Uh, I'll just show you the team as we are. And the first thing you're going to notice is, is there's going to be a question around um, the uh, nationality, which is, I think, another great debate. And we've got it next week, actually, around England's best team. But so oh. far... Wow. <laughs> England's back four, mostly of the of the of the mm. North, isn't it? Stick Seaman in, stick Seaman in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, on the bench, check Trent and Company. Then we move on to, uh, I think things might hotten up here because uh, oh. I had a great time uh, looking through all these stats. Oh. It is interesting. Let's go to uh, Elliot first. Now yeah. I put it down as a CDM and two attack midfielders, but you, you you guys are the managers, so you tell me what you did, Elliot. Oh, but so you want to pick one first. Yeah, I, I had one holding, two in front. Perfect. Who's oh, your sorry, holding? I, I had sorry, I had two two in front, one and then one number ten. Okay. Who's who's the two that are holding? Well, I, I've gone for and I know I know this is gonna get a backlash, but <laughs> I went for Skulls. Okay. And Lampard. And then Burkamp in the number ten. That was my midfield three. You just wanted to squeeze Burkamp <laughs> in, didn't you? I, I do love Burkamp, but I just think balance wise, those three. Uh, I know everyone's going to say, well, what, what about Gerard?" But the only thing for me that Gerard could do that Lampard couldn't is spray a 40-yard pass. I've got skulls for that. So. 
<laughs> Interesting. I like it. Um, Lampard has some incredible stats. 609 Premier League games, 177 goals on 102 assists and three, three Premier League titles. I might be wrong. Put in more than that, but anyway. Um, um, no, good argument there. Um, Liam, who's your ideally holding player? But if you haven't got any, that's great. Yeah, so I've got two sort of centre mids and one just in front. Um, okay. So my holding one is Roy Keane. I think he's, if you want someone to stick up for your team and just be everywhere making the tackles that need to be made, he's, his record as Man United was just phenomenal, wasn't he? Um, next to him, because I want someone putting the long balls about to my forwards, who I've got as my forwards, is David Beckham. I think his ability of passing the ball was just that he was, he was the best I've ever seen at passing the ball, so he had to be in there. And just in front of them is Kevin De Bruyne. I like it. Again, his passing and his he's I know he's not breaking the records yet, but he will be. He's close to breaking them already. And considering how he didn't he didn't break in the first time at Chelsea and then he's come back even stronger, he'll be breaking mm. the record soon enough. I love that. Two guys have gone and mm. six different midfielders. This is brilliant. Um <laughs> do, who do who take the set pieces, De Bruyne or Bex? I, I love that him. argument. David Bex. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's go to uh, Steve um, yeah I've gone for one holding uh, and this guy he had the role named after him so that's why I've put him in there you know that McAuley role oh yes um, like, you know he, he sort of made that position so he, he's got to be in there uh, and then in front of him I've gone with uh, so Vieira as a sort of like a box to box and then I've gone for David Silva. No, uh, this is incredible. Again, Good again, job. longev longevity. <laughs> you know, I've been doing it consistently for a few years. So this is yeah. no, no. Bet this is all valid. This is why we all love football. This is why we're doing it. Isn't it? This is great. <laughs> um, Magalhaes, uh, two Premier League titles. Uh, Vieira, three Premier games, and then David Silva has got um, 90 assists in his three Premier games, which is as Incredible stat. Um, let's go and pick on um, Mark Rivers. Um, I've just crossed one, one of mine out now. Oh, um, <laughs> yeah, no, it, it, it's interesting. Um, so I've gone for um, point down uh, triangle. So skulls as the uh, as the uh, I used to call it a front sweeper role, um, that CDM role. And then I went. I did go Lampard and Gerrard, and I've just crossed Gerard out and before Asif said David Silver I put David Silver in as well um, Lampard I just think that consistently consistency when you think about I only ever played um, sort of conference south but um, I, I would have uh, one good game in every five and I just couldn't get to that to that next level um, Al Emerson and, and the boys do it in the top level I do not know but if you looked at Lampard's stats, so you looked in, you know, when the papers used to do out of 10, he'd be getting sevens, sevens and eights week in, week out and scoring goals. I just think it was just phenomenal, that level of consistency at the top level week in, week out. Um, Gerard to me, was was kind of similar. And then you had the debate around Lampard and Gerard playing together. But I've seen David Silver play on a couple of occasions and... Um, I think we talk about as coaches now the half spaces and them, them areas that are kind of made for David Silva to go and pick the ball up and, and create attacks. I think that, that role was made for him as well. And seeing him live, he was just so difficult to pick up and he just popped up in all those pockets all over the pitch. So, um, yeah, I'm going to go point down, Skulls, Lampard and David Silva. Quality. I'm, I'm coming up to Jay next. I'll leave an Emerson with a hard job. Uh, Jay. Um, I've gone sort of you don't really well I suppose one CDM ish um, and then two in front I've gone Vieira um, just because growing up he was one of my favourite players even though he was from Arsenal I think if you want someone to just be physical and get stuck in and go and win the the mental battle that's your Vieira and then in front of him Gerard and Lampard um, just mainly because of what they brought to the team how influential mm. they were on the team um, yeah. And not only that, I think that formation, they could have played together. The managers they are under for England were so rigid. Um, yeah. They were never going to be able to do that job against yeah. a Spanish free in the midfield, for yeah. example. They needed someone in behind them so they could go and do their job. Um, and Lampard, I think, is the best, was the best of his time 
um, at scoring goals from the midfield, arriving late. Yeah. Oh, 177 goals. Yeah, Premier ridiculous. Even the highest number from midfielder. Um, so just to, Emerson, before we come over to you, Scholes has got two votes, Lampard's got two votes, Vera has got two votes, and so does David Silva. Who, who did you have? <laughs> Well, I've gone for a robust, strong, strength, athletic midfield. So I've oh. gone even Gerard, okay. Patrick Vieira, and Yaya Torre. Yeah, yeah. So we're gonna steamroll over you. <laughs> 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 Literally, um, Yaya Torre. I think you know what he brought to Van C. You know, pace, power. You know, I've never seen someone that can run with the ball like him. You know, it's literally unstoppable. And um, he scores goals and a big presence in that team. Vieira, you know, a leader, box to box, strength, power, tackling, you know, again a match winner. Um, and Steven Gerrard, you know, you know, he, he's captain. Well, captain, fantastic, plays for Liverpool. Comes up with the crucial goals, box to box, tackles, again scores important goals. So, yeah, if you want to um, get a game by the scruff of the neck. Give them to one of these yeah. boys and they'll they'll make something happen. <laughs> I love that. I count eleven or twelve different combinations. This is brilliant. So no thanks everyone. <laughs> so at the moment we've got Vieira's in. Vieira's he's in. But there's a tie between yeah. um, Silva, Lampard, Scholes, and Gerard. So um, who didn't vote for one of them? <laughs> Go on, Liam. Who's in out of them? Gerard, Scholes, Lampard, and David Silva. Lampard, the fact he's a high scoring midfielder, I think. Good choice. <laughs> <laughs> Lampard and um, Mark Rivers, county coach yes. of LFA. Yes, sir. Gerard Scholes or David Silva to lock partner alongside Vieira and Lampard. Silva. Silva for me. Just bring, just probably balances it off a bit. So we've got so Vieira holding, guys, is he? Yeah. Out of those three. And then uh, Lampard. Uh, Lampard can't hold there, can he? Who, who makes the bench then? We put in Gerard and um, <coughs> Scholes on the bench. I just want to <laughs> jump on a point. Could, if you were to put Silver in there, if you were to put Burkamp in there instead of Silver, who would do the better job if you're looking for that bit of magic? I think as a midfielder, Silva's probably obviously yeah. more suited, isn't he? Mm. But Burkham's not really going to come back and help. Yeah, defense. He's done yeah. it for his own little space, isn't he? Yeah, so. I think I think he's starting to look into like pitch geography and stuff like that. And um, yeah, it's those bits out of possession. I get it when you've got the ball, definitely. Um, but out of possession as well. Um, all right. This subs can change, by the way, if you want some more attackers on, because the strikers is, um, and the attacking base is going to be difficult. But uh, just stalled in. There you go. Good little team. Nice. It's a good team. Nice. Um, Gerard and Scholes on the bench currently. Now we go to the interesting... Um, oh, apologies. Then we go to the interesting part. Um, of. Uh, we're going to start with the right wing. Elliot, I've heard you're a bit of a winger. Winger? No, not, I'm not a winger. <laughs> not a winner, a winger. No, no, I'm not a winger. <laughs> I'd, be, I'd be pretty much play anywhere across midfielder up front. Oh, but. there you go then. You can go out <laughs> wide. Who, who did you go out wide right? And just before you do that, I just uh, some of the names that I pointed out there was uh, Lundberg, we mentioned last week. McManaman back in the day, especially if the guy's watching Euro 96. What a dribbler he was. I'm running with the ball. Um, so Ronaldo, Beckham, Robin, Nares, Bale and uh, Mo Salah. Yeah, so I, I've I've gone for Ronaldo. I think we've we've spoken about Messi and Ronaldo being out of this world. Ronaldo's played in the Premier League. I I think he's one. Of, he's probably the best player that's ever played the game. So if he's played in the Premier League, he has to go in. That's that's how I. He, even though he, even though he wasn't there for maybe as long as we'd have liked. And that season when he scored 30 goals as a winger, I mean, mm-hmm. as a winger, I don't think that'll be beaten. No, a, you're out and yeah. out. 84 goals under 96 games. Um, I've got Ronaldo. You've got mm. Ronaldo, Rivo. Cool. Yeah, I, I just, I just think, um, yeah. How could you have a team and and omit him from that team? He signed as a an 18 year old for I think it was 12 million. Six mm. years later, he leaves for 80 million. 
Um, just an incredible, incredible, um, versatile player, really, and and learnt his trade there because he started out wide mostly, didn't he? And then, um, then come inside as well. Uh, but just yeah, a fantastic player to watch, and someone again I've had the um, pleasure of watching live, um, and yeah, a fantastic specimen. One of those super players, isn't he? Yeah, absolutely. Didn't he win the Ballon d'Or whilst at United as well? Yeah, that season at Everton. 2008, just, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, that season, yeah. Yeah. Won the Champions League that year, didn't they? Stayed another year, lost the Champions League to Barca and then went to Real, I think. Well, um, Liam, uh, Tottenham fan, obviously. Uh, I know we said off air, but uh, Gareth Bell, did he nearly make your team? He did, on the left, yeah. Um, oh, so right, OK. He's not in there, no, I took him out. <laughs> I've got Ronaldo as well. Just watching him, watching his highlight reel, even in the Premiership, the sheer ferocity he played, uh, the intensity, I don't, I've never seen it matched. Uh, in pure effort. Yeah. I'm watching the highlights of when, like we said about United's directed <clears throat> from a corner, like within 10 seconds, they're scoring up the other end with him and Rooney just bombing forwards, getting up there. It was just, it's unreal. Absolutely. And so we still be, not even, well, I don't even really think he's peaked at his age. He's just, well, not, he's hit, still at that peak. You know what I mean? At what is he, 32, 33 now? 35. 35, yeah. There you go. <laughs> I don't see another player like that for a long, long time. Mm-hmm. Emerson, who, who made your right hand side of that attacking? Ronaldo, um, purely because when he first came, um, he was literally a, a trickster, and then he's just fine tuned himself mm. as he developed over the year to a, a clinical finisher. You know, he's got, he's come from you know, obviously Ferguson's got to take a lot of credit, but you know, as I say, he's, before he was just like an out and out winger, and now he's just turned into a complete goal machine. And you know, the last couple of years in the Premier League, he's just showed how his uh, his ability. Yeah, can't argue with that. He, he's in. Did anyone else go at anyone but Ronaldo? No. Right. Who'd you go see for Ronaldo, yeah? Yeah, Ronaldo. Jay, Ronaldo. Yeah. There you go. I think it's our third full house of, of that player. Um, we'll go straight to the left. Um, just keep on the wings. I, I picked out a couple here. Um, just sorry, just going on Mo Salah. He might have made it in another place in your team, but he's got he's got 113 games, 72 goals, 25 assists. His goal involvement per game is 0.86, and he doesn't make your team. You guys are harsh. Um, <laughs> Maybe in five uh, years. <laughs> uh, Villa bring Hazard, um, Giggs. Obviously, I know that will uh, it will appear. Uh, Mark Overmars, Aiden Hazard, and up David Ginola, back in the mid 90s. Wow. Well, calling wow. that. Um, but I see you coming straight to you this time. What, what did who did you have uh, left? Well, I spoke about him last week. I, I personally think he's the best player that the Premier League's seen, and that's uh, Thierry Henry. OK, sorry, yeah. I said, well, you've done there, so you moved him from the middle to the left. OK, cool. Best player, in your, in your opinion? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Uh, just, like, obviously watching stuff that he was doing at that time, um, you know, you, you watch back and you think, he, he was just on a different level. He, he, he would toy with he would toy with defenders, you know, um, and yeah, I, I think he and obviously he started as a left winger, turned into a um, a striker, but but he did that job at, at Barca when he went to Barca, yeah. he played on the left there, didn't he? So there's a good documentary Sky about Barca. I can't remember what it's called, but um, it's on there. Yeah, Castle. Yeah, Henri speaks really well on that, doesn't he? About relearning the game again. Um, Henri stats, 258 games, 125 goals, 74 assists, goal involvement, 0.97 per game, which is just um, out of this world. As and a manager, Emerson, you're, going, you're going, all right, Henri's on the pitch, OK, he'll get a goal, a game. I mean, it's ridiculous. Mm. Um, Emerson, does Henri go out left for you as well? Yeah, he's on the left side for me. Um, he spent most of his time on the left anyway, so he'll, he'll be comfortable out there, cutting yeah. the side, shooting with the right, so yeah, he makes it. I know you yeah. said you played in the last game at Highbury and you got your shirt. On the, at the Emirates, um, yeah. Oh, sorry, he's, um, yeah, you know, obviously a fantastic player. Went on, had a, you know, what he'd done for Arsenal was, you know, fantastic, you know, considering the team that he left, went to Barcelona, won some more. Um, yeah. and again, probably is probably the best, you know, my view, the best player that's played in the Premier League as a striker. Yeah, no, can't argue with that. Um, Liam? I know how ex Arsenal, you Tottenham. Did you go on re or did you? I'm in the middle for me, no. Oh, okay. Hold that. Who did you have on left then? 
on the left, I've gone for, for this is one of the reasons I got him. Well, for two reasons I him. One, because he's such a joy to watch the kid. He's the gracefulness he had on the ball. And yeah. also, the year that United won the treble in 99, he actually got PFA Player of the Year still, and that was Dad Um I think oh, a team that won the treble, for a player not in that team could win that, shows. Uh, and uh, yeah, watching him as a kid, when I was up to the lane and watch him, he just used to glide around the pitch effortlessly and just leave people wondering where he'd gone with the ball. He was at, yeah, and he's still got the class now as well, hasn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember, um, I remember um, was it at Spurs we scored that goal in the FA Cup? Was it Barnsley? When he got to pass off five players, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He just yeah. rips his shirt off and runs along the lines. You know, Lolo, I like it. Um, Elliot? Yeah, I, I went on re. I mean, Hazard was, I mean, as a, oh, again, yeah. as a, seeing, seeing Hazard live, he's one of them players where you just, you can't fathom how he's doing what he's doing. Like, he gets the ball in any position and he'll wriggle his way out. And it's just, when you see him live, you realise how good he actually is. And a lot of people say he's overrated. And I think a lot of that is just people reading stuff on Twitter. If you actually watch what he used to do, I think he's one of the best players to play in the Premier League. But Henri is just, again, he's just one of those players. There's levels. And Henri was just, you, you, talk, you speak about stats. But with Henri, he was one of them people where he was just, he would drive drive the whole team. He had that passion as well. And he, he actually had a nasty side. He was quite, he comes across as quite classy and humble. But he, when he had to be, he could be quite nasty and aggressive as well. So he sort of had everything you need to be a top level performer. So... I, was, I thought I went on really for longevity, I think. He had four golden boots, the most uh, of any player in the Premier League to date, so um, incredible. I think that's four votes. So, Jay, I've come to you yet? I'm forgetting now. Omri. Yeah. And um, Rivo? Omri. Yeah, there you go. Another full house, I think. Sorry if I have missed anyone out. But we need to go to now the... Uh, who's going to be... Um, well, there's a lot of threat here scoring goals, but who, who's <laughs> going to be the main one? And... Um, Let's start with Liam then. Who, who's in the middle, mate? This is where I had on Reef. Um, oh, right, yeah. Because of, I wouldn't want to be defending. <laughs> and like Jay said, you know he's going to get the ball every time he gets the ball anyway. Uh, yeah. But as we've got him on the left, I'm going to put I think I'm going to choose Aguero. Okay. I mean, um, he would have been the top three. He would have got the golden boot a lot more often if he wasn't injured as much. He's absolutely... Phenomenal play, and I'll never. Everyone's gonna remember forever, isn't they? The Aguero goal against QPR. Um, I think that's gonna go. You're gonna remember that forever. So, yeah, it's close between him and Shearer. Obviously, the Premier League all-time scorer, but I think Aguero. Nick's Aguero yeah, 180 goals in 261 games, which is uh, phenomenal. He's he's only he might be 30, 31, so he he still he could break the record if he continues the way he's going. Um, just go to um, Mark Rivers. Um, yeah, I've gone on Alan Shearer. Um, Shearer. Can you believe a, a, a British record um, Southampton to Black, Blackburn? 3.6 million. <laughs> um, <laughs> sounds, sounds ridiculous now. But um, yeah, just a born, born goal scorer. And I think, um, you know, as it, coming from a coach, <clears throat> coach's point of view as well, when we do, you know, you think back to your sort of shooting practices and everything that you used to done and used to do back in the day and all those sessions would have probably taken place outside the area. You lay it into the coach, coach lays it off. But if you look back at a lot of Shearer's goals, they're inside that box, inside the second six yard box, if you if you want to call it that. And then a high, a high percentage of one touch finishes as well. Um, he has scored some worldies, don't get me wrong, but um, if you're talking about helping young strikers um, on their way in the game, you'd, you'd, you'd uh, do a lot worse than looking at some Alan Shearer clips. Just his movement inside the box, one-touch finishes, and just showing you that you haven't, just, you haven't got to blast everything. Just Sometimes you just pass the ball in with the side of his foot. But, um, yeah, some of the goals were, were phenomenal. And, you know, a captain and a born leader as well. Mm, OK, that's Shearer. Um, Emerson? Alan Shearer. Um, yes. I was lucky enough to play against him. Um, old school striker, much from the yeah. elbows than anything else. One, one of the tallest of, you know, compared to most strikers, but is very, very good in the air. Um, as we always said, a deadly finisher. You know, he always hits the target. He always makes the goalkeeper work. And more often than not, he hits, he finds the back of the net. And um, as you said, 3.6 million. That is this is KNA. <laughs> 
you know, you know, <laughs> the step in it. But yeah, for me, Alan Shira, um, fantastic striker. Okay, excellent. Thank you, Emerson. Um, Asif? Um, I've gone for Aguero, but purely because I think as a front three, then three would interchange and work well together. Okay. Um, so just just for a style point of view, yeah, I can see I can see Shearer uh, getting in there, but it's just I think just because of the way the team's set up, I, I'd have to say Aguero. So it's uh, two two on that front there. Um, Jay Lovejoy. Um, I win. I had Shearer originally, um, <laughs> but then um, when I was looking at it, actually, if you if you take his penalties out of it, is kind of his goal involvement drops from like. 0.73 down to 0.61 and that's lower than Drogba so for me I went Aguero um, yeah, so serious 260 goals and probably 56 penalties is there still goals though Jay ain't they? yeah of course they are <laughs> but, <laughs> you know um, oh, he never missed one in the Premier League either but who's Shearer? Uh, yeah did he not? No, I no, don't, I don't know. think so oh, wow. I think everyone says it's Letizia but it's actually Shearer that's never missed Letizia missed one but yeah, I think Aguero's got the record for the most hat tricks um, in the Premier League. And for someone that I know he's played in the better sides than Shearer, but for me, he's just that touch of magic. And as Azeep said, if you're looking at that front three, um, if you're looking at the three as a whole, um, that's un- unbeatable. Decent. Elliot, who did you go for, mate? Um, again, I think it was always going to be between those two. Um, Aguero's, I think, phenomenal. Like the way he just carves goals out of nothing, and he's clinical. But then I think um, Jay's just hit, hit the nail on the head. If you look at who Aguero's played for, he's played for the dominant team pretty much in the last five, ten years. So to break the re- scoring record playing for Blackburn, Newcastle, he could have quite easily gone to Man United and probably won a few more Premier Leagues, and he's still the top goal scorer. And he managed to win a Premier League title at Blackburn. I mean. I've gone for Shearer just because those to, to be the record goal scorer playing for not the biggest clubs, I think that's just unbelievable. So I went Shearer. Great point. So that's three all. So it's on me now. This is why I love to get involved. And um, I'm gonna go. Um, I'm gonna go Alan Shearer just because I'm watching Euro '96 at the moment, and um, he was incredible. <laughs> he is um, natural goal scorer. I, I, just, I I'm gonna throw one out there for you. I'm surprised I'm leaving it picking. I honestly think in five, six years, so Harry Kane will be the top scorer of the, the Premier League. He might not be at Tottenham by then, but... Um, I think that's going to be the problem keeping him. Yeah. But just some, some of the names that we didn't mention, by the way, in that strikers, uh, Les Ferdinand, so Les, um, Eric Cantona. And I know there's only one place. I'm sure if it was old school four or two, these guys would have made it. But um, Jermaine Defoe, Mark Lowe, and Robbie Fowler. So there's a lot of people that didn't make our team. Go, um, I think back to Van Nistelrooy as well. It, yeah, sorry, Rude, Van Nistelrooy. Yeah. He just didn't. He wasn't there long enough, I think. But in terms of a a, a finisher, goal scorer. Oh yeah. Yeah, definitely. We've got two places left on the bench, and then we've done our team. Um, Aguero's in. Because he obviously just missed out. Who, who, who else we put in on? I can't believe no one's mentioned the word, the, the two words, Ryan Giggs yet tonight. I'm talking about Premier League all time eleven. And the formation. Is it? Is it? If it's four four two, Everton is he in, or likely to be more chance of being in? Yeah. More like, yeah, more chance. <clears throat> you can't in there. Yeah, really good point. Henri or Ronaldo out really. No. So, I'll throw a name out there, and go this on. Is a bit biased again, but in in the season. There was, a, I think it was the 2005 6 season. Iron Robin was absolutely unplayable, honestly. But I know I'm biased, but I know, as a being on his left foot, he literally won us the title. And I think he gets forgotten about because he, he obviously went abroad and stuff. But he and he had a lot of injuries, but he was phenomenal that season. Had he stayed in the Premier League, he might have, you know, he would yeah. probably be talking a lot about him now. Yeah. Mm. <clears throat> Um, what about uh, Robbie Fowler as a as a striker? Oh yeah, I love yeah Fat, Fowler. It's unfortunate with injuries, I think, or else he could have made it more yeah. of England. Um, but yeah, what a play it was! It's quickest hat trick until Mane, wasn't he? Mm. Against Arsenal, sorry, see, um, <laughs> three minutes or something, wasn't it? Emerson, yeah. like, who, who would you put in there as a, that final sub? So we've got Czech, Trent, Company, Gerard, Scholes, and Aguero. 
Um, what's the options? <laughs> we want anyone, you, anyone you want, mate. We've had De Bruyne, <laughs> um, Burkamp, we mentioned, Beckham, Yaya. Um, if we I suppose if we're chasing the game, I suppose, uh, I suppose I put Burkamp in there. I'll put Burkamp in there. Just purely, you can thread the balls. You can come into that number 10 role. Take the place of silver. Take silver off. Put their cap in there. Okay, I like it. Spread the ball. <laughs> He's in. I am football manager. <laughs> <laughs> um, final one before we reveal um, um, the team. Um, manager. Uh, everyone's like, the immediate person would be old Alex Ferguson. Is anyone, would anyone say someone else other than Sir Alex Ferguson? Pet. I don't like saying that because I love Jose, mm. but I'll go Pep. Why? Uh, I just think, well, it's, I'm thinking about the here and now. He's current. He's revolutionary in what he's doing um, for the here and now. No doubt there'll be another manager that comes along and knocks him off his perch, like, like Pep has done pretty much with Jose, I think. Mm. Um, and he will probably become outdated at some point. Um, but for me, it's Pep at the moment. If, if, you, if, you, if you see what he can do with a bit of money, imagine he had all the best players at his disposal. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Look at it. Yeah, like, it's true. Um, and it, uh, Emerson, would you say Sir Alex, would you? I would have probably said Sir Alex, yeah. Just about how many, I can't remember how many he won in yet. Was it 13? Yeah. Gigs, wasn't it? Incredible. Pe- Pebble, Pebble will drive him close, but I think Sir Alex just purely because there's the teams that he's rebuilt and he's just gone over and over yeah. again. And especially the last, the last time he won the, the Premier League, the team that he won the Premier League with, as mm. Wigan, we used to go to that stadium and think we we're going to get a result from him, you know, on, on paper, yeah. on that team sheet. So, yeah, I think, you know, Ferguson uh, for that. Is there I'm, going, I'm going Sir Alex as well. Sir Alex. Um, just, just because I think he was probably, was well documented, wasn't it? He was like one game away, I think, from getting the sack. Yeah something like that and um, he's made some ruthless decisions over the years and he's not he's not afraid he sort of turned around that drinking culture in the sort of mid 80s mm-hmm. early 90s um, and also if you look at his backroom staff how that's changed if you if you look at the the number twos that he's just said yeah. you know thanks a lot but now we need to move yeah, it on yeah. again I think that's been brilliant how do you think he will how, how do you think you'll compare against Pep Guardiola now if Ferguson's uh, managing now. Ooh. Considering what happened with Barcelona. Mm. <laughs> I just, I just think the game's, the game's probably just evolved a little bit now. And um, yeah. in that time, I think Ferguson was w- w- was all right. But the way it's changed now, and it really has, just in um, just in formations. I mean, we picked there 4-3-3. The, the t- formations change four or five times in games now. <laughs> Mm. It's not just one set formation. You couldn't look at City and say well, they play this or so and so plays this because it just evolves. You have different formations for attacking, different formations when you defend. Um, names have changed, terminology's changed. I just don't know whether he would have kept up with it. That's interesting. Is there anyone? Um, a moment, it looks like Ferguson's winning an argument. Can anyone uh, offer anything else? Well, I don't think some of those players would be able to play Pep style. I think he has a very he he has a philosophy. He goes and hand picks the ones that he thinks will fit his system. Whereas mm. I think Ferguson would go, what, what have I got? How am I going to get the best out of these? And that's I think mm. that's what he would be better at with any squad of players. Whereas Pep needs a very you know, high quality player that can adapt to his style. That's true. Uh, there is obviously a couple of technical players there. Um, so you saying Ferguson though there earlier? Yeah. Yeah, I'm going, I'll go focus on the man management, yeah. I think he's just edging it. Liam, AVB in there, do you? <laughs> <laughs> if, I, if I was looking at a team manager to manage my team now, it'd be Pep. Um, but as it's an all-time greatest, uh, as he is the greatest in the Premiership, isn't he? All time, so, yeah, but if it's a good team to manage tomorrow, then I'd... Are you going to your car, mate? I'll just come out now. <laughs> just, I just, I just had to move it. Sorry. I love it. Uh, Steve, final word, and then we'll show the team. Uh, are you going, uh, Wenger? Uh, 
I, I was thinking it in terms of what I said earlier about changing the game and changing um, sort of the the environment. And I think Wenger with, with a lot of that, you know, just changing the culture around football. Um, but in terms of uh, sort of managing a team, I, I think like Elliot said earlier, um, I think to Alex Ferguson, definitely deal with big personalities. Um, you know, yeah. Right, that's cool. Right, here we go then, guys. Thanks for the last... Oh, no, wrong one. That's that one. Thanks for the last hour. There's the team. Uh, thoughts? Happy now it's on paper? Unbelievable. It's, good. it's not a bad team. Just say they've said between them, just to start a line of that, it's 4,203 games they've played, 856 goals, 484 assists, and 43 Premier League titles. That's not bad, is it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not bad. But no, look, guys, we've been fantastic. Um, it's a shame um, football's not on the moment, but it's just a great opportunity. Well, like I said to you, I think it was off air, is uh, I, I very much look forward to this um, each week and um, hopefully you'll join us again next week. It's England's all time 11, um, where that back four may uh, might appear again. Um, <laughs> and certainly want to talk about how, how it didn't work out. Jay, you already mentioned about it being a bit rigid, um, so definitely uh, looking forward to that. But um, thank you so much. Hopefully everyone who's tuned in has enjoyed it and um, we'll be back uh, soon. Thanks, guys.